What you always find is that when Rasulullah would call people to give sadaqah, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was always one of the first to come forward. To the point in Ghazwa Tabuk, Uthman radiallahu anhu came forward with more than what the Messenger وسلم, was asking for. 100 camels became 200, became 300 until they became 1000. And Uthman radiallahu anhu keeps on putting that forward. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu then goes and brings 1000 gold coins and puts that in the lap of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is counting those coins and he's taking it between his fingers and he's saying nothing will harm Uthman radiallahu anhu after this day. You can do whatever you want, nothing will harm you today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you today. The other incident which he's famous for which is purchasing the well of Ruma, which was a well that was owned by one of the Jews of Medina that was placed in a strategic position, especially for Badr. Uthman radiallahu anhu was the one who bought that. Uthman radiallahu anhu was the one who financed the expansion of the masjid. Every time you have a door of sadaqah, he was foremost in that. But that's not the aspect that I want to talk about today. First and foremost, when we speak about Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, just to kind of give you a picture of who we're looking at. We're talking about the person that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says to his daughter Umm Kulthum radiallahu anha, who would be the wife of Uthman, that no man resembles more in physical appearance your father Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and your grandfather Ibrahim alayhi salam more than Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When you read his description that he was not too tall, not too short, that he had long curly black hair, a touch of redness to his face, broad shoulders, and a small gap between his teeth. These are the descriptions of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was so beautiful that Abdurrahman ibn Hazm radiallahu anhu, he says, I have never seen a man more beautiful in my life than Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Extremely handsome, extremely modest, to the point that it was said about him by, in, the, in the narration of Al-Hasan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, even when he's changing his clothes, behind closed doors, he feels a sense of shyness. That when he gave bay'ah to the Messenger وسلم, with his right hand, he refused to ever use that right hand to touch his private parts again after that. That he was so humble in his talk, so modest and soft-spoken, that you would have to come so close to him just to hear what he was trying to tell you. And the Messenger وسلم, who was known for his bashfulness, known for his haya, admired Uthman ta'ala anhu to the point that Aisha radiallahu anha narrates an incident that once the Messenger وسلم, was sitting down and he was reclining and part of his thigh was exposed وسلم, and Abu Bakr who walked in, he sat with the Messenger وسلم, Rasulullah did not sit up, he spoke with him, he left. Omar came in, he sat with the Messenger وسلم, he spoke with him and then he left. And then Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu sought permission to come in and Rasulullah sat up and he covered himself and he made sure that he was proper. And Aisha radiallahu anha says, Ya Rasulullah, we know that Abu Bakr and Umar are more virtuous than Uthman. How come when they came in, you didn't sit up, you didn't fix yourself or anything in that regard. But when Uthman came in, you, you fixed yourself in that way. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the very famous statement, shouldn't I be ashamed or shy from a man who even the angels are shy in his presence? And I want to particularly though shed light on one of the least talked about aspects about him, which was his response to adversity. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu sought the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went out of his way to show Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he loved him. And for that reason, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's two daughters, first you see Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha, who was married to who? Utba ibn, ibn Abi Lahab. And who was Umm Kulthum, his, sec, his other daughter married to? Utayba, the son of Abu Lahab. And obviously when Islam came, these two women were left divorced. Fatima radiallahu anha was still very young. These two women were left divorced without husbands. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam marries to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, his daughter Ruqayya radiallahu anha. Uthman who was famous for his modesty, 
who was loved by his people. Naturally, when a person is soft, when a person is gentle with his people, when a person shows modesty, when a person shows humility, he is loved by his people. To the point that Uthman anhu, the women in Quraysh used to sing lullabies to their children. They used to say, I love you by Ar-Rahman, the love that Quraysh has for Uthman. Ruqayya radiallahu anha was also known for her modesty. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pairs these two together. And when you have two beautiful people like this coming together, people used to even write poetry about their relationship with each other, about the way they used to treat one another. And from that relationship, you have a son, Abdullah ibn Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now I want you to think about this. Everything is going as well as it could possibly go. Uthman radiallahu anhu enjoys a special relationship with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He's married to his daughter. He has the grandson of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then Ruqayya radiallahu anha gets sick. All of a sudden she's taken by a fever. On top of that, she's taken by this fever only days before Badr. And on the same day, that the Muslims are given the victory of Badr, the, the news of the victory of, of the victory of Badr, Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha passes away. The day of great joy and the day of great sadness. And then to add to that pain, just a short time afterwards, Abdullah, his son, is walking and he is pecked in the face by a bird and he's infected and he dies too. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was so depressed, obviously. I mean, he lost his wife and his child just like that. And he's a human being radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And it got to the point that Uthman would come to the salah. He would not neglect his prayer. He would not neglect those things, but he would avoid communication with people because of his sadness. And this hurt the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He wanted to show Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu how much he loves him. So he goes to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he says, What's wrong with you, O Uthman? And Uthman radiallahu anhu answers with the obvious first, obviously the death of Ruqayya, but he says the death of Ruqayya and then something else. Something else is getting me down too. And Rasulullah says, What is that, Ya Uthman? And he says, Ya Rasulullah, my connection, my relationship with you, my kinship with you was severed by her death. But you want to know how truthful he was in that statement? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Jibreel alayhi salam came to me with an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to marry my other daughter, Umm Kulthum radiallahu anha to him with the same dowry. Subhanallah. And that's where he gets the nickname, the Nurain, the possessor of two lights. Six years later, she passes away too. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu once again is sad. And listen to how much the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loves her. He says to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, Wallahi, if I had 40 daughters, I would marry each and every single one of them to you until each and every single one of them would die and I would be left with no daughters. Who else could have that distinction like Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu? And that's, that's the love that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had for him. This tale of love between the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This story of love, you can only imagine how it was like when he passed away sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was so much so that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he became silent to the point that people thought he was mute. People thought that he lost his ability to speak. He was so taken aback by the death of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he no longer was able to speak. But we see that this story continues on and on. And the love and the desire that Uthman radiallahu anhu had for Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not end with the death of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the khilaf of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And I fast forward through all the conquests and I fast forward through the first 10 years of contribution. And there were many contributions from him radiallahu anhu. And we go to his moment of adversity. We go to the fitna that was caused in this ummah from one man, Abdullah ibn Saba, who was financed from the outside to cause division within the Muslim ummah. 
and who started his division, who started his fitna with going to Kufa and Iraq and asking questions here and there, trying to shake people's faith. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because of his leniency, would not crush that revolt. And you have these people, this fitna rising from all the corners of the Muslim world. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because of his leniency, does not act harshly towards them, but instead he replaces governors as they request. And he acts towards them with softness until they finally lay the house of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu under siege. And for this ordeal of over 40 days, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who at that point was 82 years old, would be forbidden water from the same well that he purchased for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would be forbidden to pray in the same masjid that he financed its expansion, the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would be treated in the most humiliating manner. And this is something that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in many different ahadith, he warned Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu that this would happen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a tirmidhi and hakim from Aisha radiallahu anha, that he said to Uthman radiallahu anhu, O oh Uthman, perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall clothe you with a garment. And if the hypocrites demand that you remove it from yourself, do not remove it until you meet me. Do not take off a garment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed upon you. And what was Rasulullah talking about? He was talking about the Khilafah. That once the Messenger وسلم, told Uthman radiallahu anhu, come close. And he started to whisper into his ear. And as he would whisper into his ear, Uthman radiallahu anhu would move away and Rasulullah would say, did you understand? And Uthman radiallahu anhu would say, yes. And Rasulullah would say, come close. And he would keep on whispering in his ear until the face of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu started to change colors. And Rasulullah kept on telling him, did you understand? He said, Naam ya Rasulullah, I understood, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so when this fitna comes, the incidents that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu goes through, in which he prohibits the Sahaba from fighting on his behalf, and he says, I do not want a single drop of blood being shed in my cause. But still with that, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu places his children, Al-Hasan wal Hussein, to guard Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Az Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhu places his son Abdullah ibn Zubair. So the children of the greatest Sahaba are guarding Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and Uthman is telling them, Do not shed a drop of blood in my cause. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu is begging him that we have to foil this, this fitna, we have to foil this plot, and he's consistently refusing. And we saw the rudeness the harsh hearts that these people had when they treated Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu worse than a prisoner would be, would be treated. And they started to come closer and closer on his house. And they set his gate on fire. And one man jumps into the back of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu's house. And he says, leave it and we will leave you. Then the next incident that takes place is they started to throw stones in the house of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Then comes a day that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the one who had, it has been confirmed from Ibn Hajar radiallahu rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the only people who read the entire Qur'an in one rak'ah, and the one who used to keep the habit of fasting even in his old age. On that day of Thursday, July 16th, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, while he's reading Qur'an, and he's sitting down, this 82-year-old man, he dozes off and he falls asleep at the time of Salat al-Asr. And he was fasting that day because it's the day of Thursday and that was the sunnah of the Messenger wasallam to fast that day. And he sees in his dream Rasulullah wasallam standing in front of him, smiling. And behind him, is Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhumah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ya Uthman, did they forbid you from water? And he said, Naam, Ya Rasulullah. And he said, Ya Uthman, did they forbid you from food? 
And he said, Naam, Ya Rasulullah, they forbade me from food. And he said, Ya Uthman, did they forbid you from praying Salah in my masjid? And he said, Naam, Ya Rasulullah, they forbade me from praying Salah in your masjid. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then says to Uthman radiallahu anhu, the one who he loved so much, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to him, he says, Abshir ya Uthman, good news, O oh Uthman, you're going to break your fast with us tonight. SubhanAllah.